First of all, I want to say this. Today, today, when I talk about God, I like to use this phrase. This reality we call God. Because I feel very strongly, first it helps people to question, no? When I tell people, this reality we call God, then they matter, what is this reality? Well, you have to discover. Also, to bring away this reality from identifying it with a title. The danger much more with God in identifying this reality we call God with a title, well, my dear, it can bring you to idolatry. That's why I like there is an Indian saying in the Indian scriptures which says this, By what name shall I call you, you who are beyond all name? Justo. Justo. A second thing that I want to emphasize, I tend to say today, one cannot really talk about God without having had an experience of God. My dear, can you talk about love without having experienced love? Can you talk about pain without having experienced pain? And I say, how you cannot talk about God without in some way having had an experience of God. Whatever the reasons that are presented to me for denying this reality we call God, I tend to say, they are valid. All the reasons for denying the presence of God are valid because this reality we call God is beyond all these reasons and only someone who has experienced God understands this understands this and this is why there is a very central Ignatian principle for our, in our relationship with God the Ignatian principle is this. It is from the effect the experience has on you that you can come to the deduction, to the conclusion that this was from God. This is a fundamental Ignatian principle in our relationship with God. This is why in the exercises, in the fourth week, he puts it very beautifully. The divinity manifests itself to the effect it is having on the disciples, which is very deep, because ultimately, dear, ultimately, the only proof, if you want to say, that we can have of the resurrection of Jesus is simply this, the transformation the disciples went through. The God revealed to us by Jesus and in Jesus is a God who brings life and freedom. And it is this what one experiences when one has an authentic experience of God. And please allow me to say, first of all, that is why I like the conclusion of St. John's Gospel. All this is narrated that you may believe in Christ and in Him have life. And please allow me to say, life is not a concept, not a religious concept, not a spiritual concept. Life is an existential reality. You can know whether this God that you follow brings you life or not. You can know whether this God that you follow gives you freedom or not. It's not a theory. You experience life of freedom and you can know, you can know. This is why I say, dear, if the God that you follow, you experience in some way as a burden, that God must die, that God must die. In other words, the image of God that you have and which you are following has to be removed, has to be shattered. It's a false image. It's a false image. And this is why I say today, when life challenges our images of God, please don't question life. Don't question God. Challenge your images of God. When life challenges our images of God, don't question life, don't question God, challenge your images of God. For example, one of the most common things we hear, which makes me boil a little bit within me, whenever there is a tragedy, now we have had the tragedy in Nepal, no? 
The same question comes, if God is love, how can He allow this? But my dear, can you please tell me, who has invented, invented, that love can control everything? This is a projection of ourselves, who think that to be secure, we need to control. Love doesn't control anything. Love gives you the strength to face. And what you face through love will never destroy you. The same today, my dear. I, I confess, to live in hope, I don't need a God who is in control of everything. I only want a God who is present. And for me that is enough. And this is why in Ignatian spirituality, very beautifully there, there is one word used of God which I think is very unique in Ignatian spirituality. God labors. And Ignatius makes a distinction between labor and working. Even the Bible tells us, as Jesus tells us, I work and the Father continues working. But using laboring for God, you sweat, that means. I think it is only found in Ignatian spirituality. And do you know what is the biggest sign or the strongest sign that God is still laboring? Where creation and humanity has not yet reached its fullness. Where creation or humanity has reached its fullness, there is no need for God to keep laboring. And this is why we as Jesuits enter into situations of sin, of injustice, of poverty, where there is inhumanness, because it is the greatest sign God is still laboring. And God invites us, will you labor with me to bring life to its fullness, to bring humanity to its completion, to its completion? But my dear, it is not easy to allow our images of God to be shattered. Because we all want to find security with those who mean to us, or whom we love, or if God means to us. This is precisely what happened to Peter when Jesus told him, you know, Peter, I'm going to suffer and they're going to kill me. And Peter jumps. There is no doubt that Peter could not sleep that night. He was sincere. He was generous and he loved Jesus. Then what went wrong? He had an image of how Jesus the Messiah should be. And Jesus shatters that image. My dear, we cannot relate with another, much more with those whom we love, and with God without images. We cannot relate with another without images. Images are meant to help us to come in contact with the reality. But unfortunately, many beautiful relationships break because we prefer to remain in love with the image than with reality. This is why many relationships break. And this is much more so in our relationship with God, whom you cannot enclose, whom you cannot enclose. But precisely because we want to feel secure with God, we tend to reduce Him to our images, and we want to get stuck there, to get stuck to the images that we have. This is why, dear, today I say, the more one grows deeper, in living in communion with this Divine Presence. My dear, there will be moments when from the depth within you, you sense. I don't understand. I don't understand this reality. And, and this is important, in that very same moment of not understanding, this is the... You think drawn towards that reality. This is the frontier when we start touching mystery. In the very fact, like standing naked in front of the other, I don't understand this reality. But in the very fact of not understanding, you feel drawn towards it. When you touch mystery, mystery does not push you but draws you deeper, and draws you deeper. Finally to say, I, today, today, I would like very much to share about this reality we call God, 
to help people to come to taste the life and freedom that this divine reality presents. To be honest, I don't know how to put it. I don't want only to share about God just to make God known. God can take care of himself or herself better than me. But I want to help people to come to sense, experience, the fullness, the freedom that this reality we call God brings to life within you. Because without coming to sense this reality, we have not yet touched fullness. See, see, I'll give you this example. If you encounter somebody who has never experienced love, never, in his or her life, immediately you sense there is something missing, no, in this person. And if you could help that person, you'll do it. The same, the same with God. One who has not experienced the fullness, the freedom that this reality we call God brings to life, there is still something that is missing in one's fullness. And this becomes more deeper to the revelation of Jesus. Because Jesus makes us aware that there is no humanity without divinity. Humanity is not complete without the divine dimension. And the risen Jesus takes us even one step deeper because as a human being is part of the Trinity today, divinity is not complete without humanity. And so, when you come to this level, you wonder, then who are we human beings? And who is this reality we call God?